Hello everyone, this is Argon Matrix, welcoming you to episode 46 of The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. And in this episode, that's what I'm going to say now, instead of in the last episode, uh, we are going to be... No, don't put that there, put that there, there we go. We are going to be removing this block with our ocarina. Because apparent... Wait, what's the song again? There we go. Yeah, because apparently music can completely set and utterly send any solid object it wants to oblivion and return it from oblivion whenever it wants to. Don't ask me how that works, it just does. In Zelda world. In Hy oh my god, it's another one of these giant ass Boko Babas, Deku Babas, whatever you want to call them. That we s oh my god, I hear something. I heard something. I hear you, Octorok. I'm gonna hit you with your own rock. Hit you in the face. Smack out a hammer. Anyways, um, yeah, this is a weird little place, like a little courtyard here. Anyways, there's a well over here. It's full of water. I'm sure that's very interesting for you to know. We'll be coming back to that eventually. And for now, but for now, we're just gonna head over here. We're gonna kill this sculptula, which is not a gold sculptula. It's just a sculptula. Yep. Kill this one. And no matter how much you try, you are not going to be able to hit that one with your hook shot. So what you're going to have to do... Can I hook shot up onto this one? Yes, yes I can, but whatever. You're going to have to kind of go salt snake on this one and sneak past this guy. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh, crap. Yeah, see, when he turns purple like that, it means he spotted you. Maybe I can make it this time? Maybe? Maybe? Oh, yes, I made it. I made it with room to spare. Oh, what's this? Another mini boss? No, just a blue bubble. But it is guarding something. What's this one guarding? Is guarding another tiny chest? Oh no, this one's guarding a big chest. See, that doesn't make sense to me. One little tiny, easily defeated blue bubble is guarding a. Why is it? Oh, I, I was on the wrong side. Damn. One tiny little blue bubble is guarding a big ass chest, and another one is guarding the a tiny little chest containing a small key. Anyways, that's the dungeon map. Just for fun. Oh, is this the way? No, I just came through that way. I'm stupid. I just went I just turned around. I just did a full 180. Okay. Oh my god, die. Yeah, oh no, the Deku nuts. They fell. They've been lost into oblivion. And not because of my ocarina. Don't even bring that up. That's just bullshit. Just kill that guy for fun. And hook shot over here. And now there's a strange red switch. Okay. I don't know why the switch is red, but it drains the water away. It shouldn't be blue if it drains water. That would only make sense to me, but whatever. Now we jump down here, and this is a very similar area to the one we were just in not too long ago. Die, please. Okay, okay. Oh, oh my god, that was that was annoying. Yeah, so this is basically another area that we could not previously access, but now we have access to it. And we have access indefinitely to it since we drained the well, which leads to the other courtyard. The other courtyard as well. But before we leave this area, you want to hook shot up to this chest very precisely. Not like that. Just like that. You can open the chest if you want to. I think it just contains a heart. Yeah, that's about it. But there's also a gold sculpture up here, so it's definitely worth your time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Isn't it so much easier to get gold sculptures with the hook shot instead of having to use, like, the slingshot and the boomerang in conjunction? Plus, they only take one hit from the hook shot. Oh, man. Anyways, by the way, we're st we are still in the process of collecting small keys because at the end of this well, if we can ever get there, oh my god my gall. There's another small key. Yep. And there is a certain item that you can get before this dungeon that I was planning to get in my pre-dungeon raid, essentially. That would allow you to walk around underwater. Um, but I didn't get it, and even if you do get it, you cannot go down there like that and, um, open that chest because you cannot open the chest underwater, surprisingly. So you still have to do that even if you did get that item. FYI. And we're back in this courtyard now, we can leave. Because that's all these courtyards have to offer us. Sorry about that, I hit the microphone again. I'm so stupid. I'm so thilly. Oh, 
let's go. Just a sec, guys. Okay, there we go. And now we're gonna consume our first key. Oh, our key's all grown up. Die. Die, monster. You don't belong in this world. Fuha. Hey, I want that heart. I want to be at full health. Yay. Anyways, we are about to enter one of the most confusing and most well-designed rooms in the game, in my opinion. First, I'm going to kill him. Please. There we go. Now, this room, it really kind of bamboozled me for a little bit on my first time through the game. Oh, there's nothing over there. Like, I don't, I don't really know why, but... Actually, I do know one of the reasons why, but still. It is a fairly well-designed room. I give props to whoever designed this. Anyways, so you come out he over here, and Navi's gonna tell you that this arrow's painted on the ground. And I called that before she even said it. Because I just know this game that well. And this is stupid. For When the first time I came through this dungeon, I did not know that you could pull this. I, j I just thought it was a wall with a funky symbol on it. I'm like, what does this mean? Oh my god, I was stuck for like, like one, maybe one and a half hours just trying to figure out what was up that wall. Alright guys, sorry about that. My sister just kind of interrupted me again. I mean, seriously, can't she solve her own problems? She's freaking two years older than me. Anyways, yeah, it was a bit of a longer interruption, so I kind of lost my thought process. I think I just finished telling that story about how I got, about how I epically failed on my first time through this dungeon. But, whatever. Anyways, now you might be able to hear the washing machine in the background. I don't know if you can. You probably can. It's pretty loud. Just pay that in mind. Just listen to the sweet and soothing sounds of my voice. If you will. Anyways, basically this room is just a giant block puzzle. So there's really nothing for me to narrate about this. It's too... I don't know. It's just not very interesting. Oh, I have to go to the other side. Okay. Anyway, so while I'm doing this, I might as well... I don't know if I've already talked about this. I don't think I have. But, um... I wanted to talk about E3 a little bit. It's just kind of interesting. Um, in my opinion, I think Nintendo did have had the have the best did have the best press conference there because they just unveiled so much crap and it's just like it's like hey we've got Donkey Kong and Zelda and Mario. Well, Mario wasn't as big, but whatever. We've got a bunch of crap and all you guys kind of suck and you're ripping us off with your Kinect and your move and stuff. And don't get me wrong, those aren't complete rip-offs, they're just kind of getting with the times now. Because motion controls us the wave of the future. And then there's going to be like virtual reality and stuff, which is kind of where Kinect is taking us a little bit. But yeah. Anyways, the game I'm most excited for from Nintendo is definitely uh, Zelda Skyward Sword. I know a lot of people are saying that the graphics look kind of retarded, because it's kind of like a, bl a blend of Wind Waker and Twilight Princess a little bit. It's like Twilight Princess style like Twilight Princess polygons with Wind Waker crap pla pa pasted all over them or something. But I still think it looks pretty awesome. I'm also looking forward to Epic Mickey, which is going to be pretty fun. Um, Kirby's Epic Yarn. Yeah, Epic was a little bit overused at E3 this year, but whatever. Epic is a good word with gamers, so. And um, also Donkey Kong. Donkey Kong Country Returns. That'll be a good one, too. Anyways, uh, looks like we're just about done with that room. If I can just kill these stupid bubbles. Whatever, I don't even have to kill that one. What am I doing? We can just go in here now. And oh my god. What the hell is up with this corridor? Who did this? This corridor is also... No! I'm not even gonna... I'm not even gonna do anything. I'm not even gonna grace that thing with a compliment or... Not a compliment, a comment. Watch for the chat of monsters that hang from the ceiling. That's actually a helpful tip. Be careful of the wall masters or whatever. Because they will be a rather large pain in the ass. Um, yeah. Because they can, they can come down and grab you and take you all the way back to the very beginning of the dungeon. Uh, there's a blank picture frame here. What's that all about? This one's not blank. But now it is. What the hell is up here? Oh, that one's not blank. But now it is. Even though I can't see it, I know that it is because I heard that sound. Whatever. Oh my god, the door lock behind us. Is it another mini boss? As a matter of fact, it is. This time it's the real mini boss. Stalfos. That's right. Stalfos weren't the mini boss. Stalfos were. Die. Um. 
Um, you guys. Sorry I paused that kind of without warning there. I thought I heard my sister coming again, but it was just a false alarm. But now looking at my timer, I think it is about time I actually stop. So, in the next episode, we are going to take on the real mini boss of this dungeon, Stalfos. And these these are actually the mini boss because they are guarding the item that we are going to acquire in this dungeon. You know, like the slingshot bombs, stuff like that. Um, yeah, so in the next episode, we're going to finish off this battle. This is Argon Matrix signing out. Thank you, and good night.